Hey, welcome to the dispensary. I'm Yara Willard, and I'm just hanging out today, reading up this fungal pharmacy by Robert Rogers. You wanna learn more with me? Let's journey down the rabbit hole and see what we can find out about this mushroom. Cheers, my friend. Wow. Chaga is definitely one of my favorite teas. You know, I've been drinking this for years, and it doesn't matter how many times I've had it, I never get bored with it. It has a nice rich vanilla type flavor, dark and robust and just, oh, so tasty. Definitely a favorite. You know, this is one of those pretty weird looking mushrooms. I mean, this one here is like a beautiful heart. When you look at the other side, it looks kind of like a scab or a wart. This thing grows on a birch tree. That's its most common place that it likes to grow. And it grows all over the Northern Hemisphere through all the boreal forests and the birch forests. So Canada happens to be one of the most abundant places for chaga mushroom. It's also found in Russia and Eastern Europe and all through that part of the world and down into the States as well. But it's not found anywhere else in the lower parts of the world. Only likes those cold forests that are birch based. Now. This isn't truly a fruiting body the way we might see with other mushrooms. It's actually called a sclerotia. And it looks, like I said, like a big burnt kind of wart piece. Really, it's more like a concentration of the mycelium in the tree. And this isn't really parasitic. Now, some people might think it's parasitic, but it actually often helps extend the life of the tree. This is a good example of how um, a part of the tree would have fallen, like a branch might have fallen off. And in that spot, the chaga would start growing and healing that wound. So it's almost like a scab. And the mycelium living underground with the tree comes up into it and helps protect it. Now, they've been doing some interesting studies with chaga where they're starting to use it on old orchards. And it's, so this is a neat and innovative way that I'm pretty excited about. And I hope that it gets more research and more validation. But they're basically making concentrated extracts of it, spraying it on the trees and helping the old orchards that have cracks and fissures and broken bits in the trees to reheal and mend. The trees that have this mushroom on it live longer. So it's not like other mushrooms that are more parasitic and eat the trees. It's more of a symbiotic relationship. What I'd like to cover today is a little bit about how we harvest this, what its benefits are, how we kind of process and work with it. We get a lot of ours from New Brunswick. We have a guy that goes out on horseback and harvests and he goes through the trails. Pretty, pretty ethical because there is some issues around ethical harvesting with this mushroom, i.e. because it's so tasty and has so many health benefits, people are everywhere starting to discover it and realize it and they're harvesting it like crazy. So we do want to be careful that we're not overdoing this. We want to make sure that we're making as little of a scab as we can on the tree, which means we want the right tools, a long handled chisel and a nice little hatchet. We also might want to have a small bow saw in case we're going to cut pieces of it. The long handed chisel can go and chop in the tops and we use the back of the hatchet to kind of get it in there. And then usually what we'll do is pop it off from the bottom with the hatchet. So pop. But we want to make sure that we're using just, we're just getting just the edges there. The other thing is, is that we might be using a saw, but the worst thing we can do is to strip away a lot of the bark of the tree when we're harvesting this mushroom. It will grow back, but at the same time, it leaves a big scab on the tree. So we want to be careful. We don't really need a lot of this. The thing is, is you could rebrew this thing like four to five times. We'll talk more about that in the, in the way we process it, but Literally, there's a lot of medicine here in one mushroom, so we don't need a ton of it. And it's important to kind of notice that the chaga grows over years and you can flag some and come back when you run out. So if you live in an area where it is, try not to over harvest it, just notice where it is and you'll see that there's some spots where you can watch it growing and as it grows, you can harvest a little bit and use it. Once you've harvested this mushroom, it needs to be broken up into an easy to use form, which means we want to smash it up into smaller pieces. Now what we've got here, I've got a few pieces. This is kind of how we process it. We smash up into these size of pieces and these we call chugga chunks. Now we sell those directly and then we smash them into some smaller and we filter it into smaller and then we grind it into a smaller cut. So this would be more like a tea cut. If we're gonna be making tea with it, this powder we might be adding into drinks or we might be making a really instant 
tea or using it for tincture blend. These chaga chunks, if we wanna put this in a pot with tea, we're gonna be able to re-brew that five, six, seven times. So we might stick a chunk like this in our pot and be using it for a long period of time. Chaga mushroom has a rich history of use, especially in Eastern Europe. I think it's something like 500 years of recorded history of this being a medicinal mushroom superfood from that part of the world. Typically we make this as a tea, and it was commonly decocted in that kind of double-double boil and trouble method where you simmer it for a number of hours, drank in regularly. I told you this mushroom tastes good and is abundant here in Canada, but what are the medicinal benefits of this thing? Now there's a lot of really awesome chemistry and we'll go into that, but really the main kind of top benefits that this mushroom has shown is an immunomodulating property, which is similar to some of the other mushrooms. We can relate that to things like the branch polysaccharides and the um, beta glucans that are found in chaga. It's also got a really soothing aspect to it. So good for inflammation, especially things like gastritis and ulcers and all this type of stuff through the digestive tract has a really nice soothing anti-inflammatory kind of aspect to it. It's also got high antioxidant qualities. In fact, they put this thing on the ORAC scale, which is a way in which they measure reactive capacity of antioxidants. And what is the potential of these antioxidant substances? And they, they put all the different super herbs and foods on those, on that scale, uh, including like the matcha and the chocolate and the goji berries and the acai and all this stuff. They put the chaga on it and all of a sudden they're like, whoa, it's like way up here. You know, some of these other things are like this, boom, chaga right through the roof. This is the most antioxidant thing we've found on this planet to date. Why is that? Well, it's got something called SOD in it, superoxide dismutase. Now, this is something that we use regularly in our body, in our organ systems to help prevent oxidative damage. Now, these are the cells that we don't want to have to reproduce fast. Like our fingertips, no problem. We're gonna burn through cells really quickly. Our inside of our digestive tract, we're gonna burn through cells quickly, but SOD is specific for helping as a free radical scavenger so that we don't have to burn through those cells so fast. So, it's got one of the most potent antioxidants in it, as well as it's got a bunch of other phytosterols in it. And these phytosterols are definitely some of the richest chemistry to help increase that kind of antioxidant potential as well. The phytosterol compounds in chaga are some of the aspects that really help it work with those cancer cells and reducing down and have shown the big results. And those are things like the inotosterol and the lansosterol, I think it's called. These are found mostly in the inner part. Now the betulinic acid, which also works to help reduce some of those kind of cancer cells, is a triterpene compound that's also antiviral to a degree, and it's concentrated in the black part of the chaga. So we actually have different compounds in the different parts. We've got our light colored. This is maybe a better example right here, where we got the really light colored, and then we have the dark colored. And we got more of our phytosterols in there, and we got more of our triterpene compounds in the black part. So traditionally, if you want a real tonic tea or a tonic substance, you might scabber off some of this black stuff. Because this is where you're gonna have those antiviral compounds that are a little stronger. So you might take our machete if we're harvesting it that way, or our um, hatchet, and just chip off a bit of the black stuff. So we've got a really nice tasty tea on the inside. Now, if we want the antiviral compounds and more of the cancer fighting compounds, we might keep some of that in the tea. Make sense? Now, the betulinic acid that's found in the outside, the triterpenes that were found in the outside of the chaga, these are being researched right now because they have this ability to help create better healthy cholesterol in the body, lowering the LDLs, which is the bad cholesterol, and supporting the HDLs to be more abundant in that sense. So, this in itself, might be one of the best things for helping us stabilize and move away from cholesterol issues. What always blows me away about medicinal mushrooms like this is the magnitude of diversity and spectrum that they can help heal in the body and help bring us to that better level of performance. It's kind of this balancing effect that they help give us, stabilizing our systems and helping us be more functional as humans. So here I have this beautiful tea that I really love drinking. I drink it almost all winter long and Little do I know, well I do know, I guess, but that it's helping increase and balance my immune system so I don't get sick, reduce down bad cholesterol, working with anti-inflammatory effects in the body. I wanna take a minute here and just chat with you a little bit about cancer. Now as you know, 
This is a big thing in our society these days. We see a lot of people going down the cancer path. And I like to just think that this is actually not a personal issue, this is a societal issue. We have a lot of toxic things in our world and we're starting to see that affect us more and more. And so some of these mushrooms like chaga just might be one of the best ways in which we can start to support and encourage healthy cells in the body. Now I'm not calling this a magic bullet by any means. There are no magic bullets. That's a fictitious kind of idea around something that's gonna heal us and we're not gonna to have to do any lifestyle changes. Now, of course, when it comes to cancer and things like that, lifestyle changes become one of the big aspects. But you take chaga, for example, and you Google this mushroom with the word cancer and you get millions of hits right away. Stories of people working with it, all kinds of rich history from Europe and different scientific research that's been done on it. Now, why is that, you know? A lot of that has to do with this chemistry, these branched polysaccharides that are immunomodulating and helping protect the system and build up the immune system. And we're also seeing that those work with chemotherapy too. So often these are actually quite safe to be used with the modern drug prescription and chemotherapy. Now, of course, the issue we have as a society is that the doctors and the herbalists and the um, eclectics are not on the same page. So most of the doctors really have no idea about working with medicinal mushrooms. From their opinion, be safe, stick with the protocol, and don't have any interactions. Now, the problem with this logic is that it's not holistic. It doesn't actually lend well to the most ideal healing. So we see a lot of these mushrooms. Chaga is one of them, but turkey tail is another one. These have been used in conjunction in other countries with chemotherapy and with these types of um, aggressive treatments and shown to help the immune system be able to recover and bounce back a lot more effectively. So anyway, Take all that with a grain of dolls, but when you're doing your research or you have family members and they're going through some of this stuff, I encourage you to check out a little more in depth how mushrooms like this can be beneficial for deep immune issues and some of these uh, out of coherence type phenomenons where we have that autoimmune diseases, cancers, viral implications, some of these big heavy hitters in our society. Medicinal mushrooms are definitely there to help support. We start using this not just as a tea, even though that's my favorite way to do, which is that decoction method where we're simmering it down for a number of hours. Now, just so you know, when it comes to a tea with chaga, you can keep adding water. So I'll often brew my chaga tea three to four times. In fact, I think this is the second or third brew already on this one, and it's still got a nice and dark color. You can brew this until you start to lose flavor. And trust me, the flavor lasts a long time. Now, another aspect about this mushroom is it's got some antibacterial, antiseptic qualities, making it good for a long time and helping work with the digestive system. But also if you leave it on your stove, it's not gonna go bad the same way a peppermint tea or something like that might do. So I've left this on my stove for over a week and I keep rebrewing it and I'm not having to put it in the fridge. But sometimes when I rebrew a whole lot of it, I might take a mason jar and stick that in the fridge so I can use it later for smoothies or soups, or I'll even make my oatmeal with that as a water. Here's a quick brain hook for you. Think of tea as an upgraded form of water. So when you're making things with water all the time, why not use tea? Hmm. One of the main anti-cancer medicines that have been used since the 1950s in Russia is called bifungin, and it is an alcohol extract of the chaga. So, of course, what we're seeing when we extract it with water is we're getting a lot of those polysaccharides, some of those phenol groups out, but we're not getting all of those triterpene compounds and all of those kind of alcohol soluble compounds. So we make what's called a dual extract. And this is what I encourage. It's simple and not that hard. It's a really strong decoction. And then it's from there made a really strong alcohol and putting the two together. Simple process. We have other videos that kind of talk a little more about the dual extracted tincture method, but that's a great way to use it. Okay, got it right here. So in this case, what we're going to do if we make a decoction ethanol extract or a dual extraction is we're going to use probably about that much, three droppers full of that. Or what I really like to do with tinctures like this 
is to get the essence, we use more subtle amounts. So just a little bit like this. Mmm, a couple drops on my tongue. Really gives me that sense of like the full rounded experience of chaga. From there, I might, after a little while, now that I've had that roll around my mouth and I've got the essence of this mushroom, I might take a much larger dose. I'll take my three droppers full, as you can see. <laughs> I'll take two, that's fine for now. Now it's pretty safe and you know easily used like that, but of course you're gonna have some of that alcohol flavor. So if you have issues with that flavor, know that you're not gonna get that much alcohol. It just has a strong flavor. You can add that into your tea. I guess I am gonna take three. I'll go like that, add it into your tea, and th that way you alleviate a lot of that. Also, if it's really hot water, it's gonna help evaporate some of the alcohol. Now, this is one way. We found that there's another way we can make really potent chaga, and that is to do a dual extracted powder. We also do a steam extracted powder, which means it's the cell walls have been broken open, but it's still a whole food, and we can consume that as a food. But the dual extracted powder is almost like a juice powder, but with a tincture. So it's taking that alcohol extract and evaporating it down till we have this nice, fine powder. This is one of my favorite ways to work with it because it's easily blended. So I'll put it into my water, and it dissolves nicely in a liquid. So we like that and we use it in all kinds of powder blends now because it's just a great medicine. Now, whoa, now I've got a serious, strong chaga brew. I think I might add a little more tea. All of these different ways are gonna give us different aspects of the mushroom. They're all quite safe. We don't wanna be consuming tons of the tincture and we don't wanna be eating the whole like jar of this um, dual extracted powder, but neither one are gonna cause any kind of health issues if we consume a little more of them, so. Hmm, just like that, bam! Now I have probably some of the most robust chaga tea I can possibly make. With that, we can then use these powders or these tinctures or any of that kind of stuff to add it into elixirs and smoothies and all these other methods. We make a drink called Kickstart, which is a coffee substitute, and it's got chaga as a base, giving it a nice, well-rounded flavor and immune pro building property. We also make another one called Activate, and it's got the chaga in it too. And it's again, supporting the immune system, balancing stress. This blend is designed with a kind of a nice chocolatey rich flavor. It's great that way. Of course, there are many other ways in which we can use it. So, you know, get out, explore on the internet, find out more about chaga because this is a seriously potent healing medicine and superfood that we can start to incorporate into our daily lives. Thanks for joining me. Have some chaga tea and we'll see you soon. All right, friends? Ciao for now. Oh, hey. Come back, there's one more thing I wanted to talk about. Actually, what I was just reading in Fungal Pharmacy by Robert Rogers was about chaga essence. Now, these are like flower essences, but I think they're done in the moonlight, the full moonlight, and you get this essence, which is more of that emotional, energetic aspect of the mushroom, and you can take that in the very subtle, subtle doses. Just like I was doing with the tincture, just a tiny dropper. Anyway, he says that chaga essence is associated with emotional constriction. The essence will help to promote a more flexible approach to life and spirituality. There you go. That's all. Just wanted to put that little sound bite and thought into your mind. Because you know, all these medicines work on many different levels. And each way in which we start to work with them, we start to learn more about how we show up in the world. Mm -hmm.